Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 11, Functions Make. This is actually a pretty cool lesson here, kids. We are going to make our own quote maker, and who doesn't love quotes from Mr. Rhodes? We're gonna break this project down into uh, three parts. We're gonna explore this, and then we're gonna look over our project sheet, and finally, we're gonna build our app, kids. Let's start with step number one, explore. Try some of the options. All right, let's run it, kids. And our quote, let's do it. Mr. Rhodes is amazing. And it looks like I can change the font size. Make Mr. Rhodes is amazing huge, smaller. Looks like we can change the font family. Kids, no comic sans. You think this is a font selector? And it looks like we have a font color. We can pick between light blue, light green, light pink, and lavender. So it looks like it's changing some different things. What happens if we choose a lavender and the lucide? And then light green kids. It says, nice design. Over here, it looks like we got a looking fresh. So it looks like in a certain font color and sizes, it gives me a different message down here. So it looks like we got a couple things going. We have our quote going up here. We have our font selector, our color selector, our font size, and then certain combinations look like they're going to give a little comment down here at the bottom. When does the screen update? Well, it updates anytime I do anything, kids. So I don't have to click refresh or anything. It looks like it just does it as soon as that event happens. What are the inputs? Looks like the inputs are going to be the quote, the text, the color, and the font size. How could a function be used in this app? Well, kids, we've been spending a lot of time learning how to update a screen. I'm going to go out on a wild guess here and say update screen is where we're going to use our function as well in this one. Let's jump over to our project sheet and discuss some of the specifics. Over here is my project sheet for here. You're going to see we're going to plan out some variables here. And we're going to get to that more when we actually get into the project kids. You know me, I like to jump in, but I just want to show a couple of things. Mainly this right here, kids is the heart to it all. Remember how I said back there, it gave some feedback. If I picked a specific color font and everything, well, kids, well, there's the code you need right there in order to create it. So this pretty much gives you that code right there. Under here, you'll see a function and it looks like here's our big hint kids update screen looks like it's going to be our function. And if you look over here, what needs to be updated? Well, anytime we hit a down or an up button, we need that. So it looks like anytime we hit a button, we're probably going to need our update screen. And what is that? Well, that's just that setting the text or whatever to the label. And then we're choosing what variable it's going to be there, kids. So that's all that is. This if statement, I'm going to take a wild guess, kids. This if statement right here is probably going to go in our update screen down here as well. If we go down to the bottom here, you'll see we have some different inputs and they already started them for us. And finally, kids, here's our rubric and here is our to do. So we're going to create a variable, give our variable a starting value, create a conditional that checks the various inputs, create a function that updates the screen, create event handlers on events for the inputs. And then we're going to use our awesome debugging skills to identify unexpected behavior and fix our program. And kids, if you've uh, listened to some of these videos, you know I'm going to make some mistakes, but we'll fix them and that's all right. And then we have some extensions here. Kids, we're not going to go over any of that in the video. Today, we are just going to cover the lesson itself. Let's go ahead and jump back to code.org. So first things first, kids, let's finish this part and move on. 
Here we are. Kids, I know this is scary. It's a blank page. No comments to help us out. But don't worry, my friends. I think we can do it just fine. I know the first thing I need to do for my sheet is create some variables. So let's go ahead and create some variables. Remember, these are going to be global variables, kids, not local ones. So we're going to create them all outside of our event. So all of our events can use them. Which one would we use? Well, we're declaring a variable. That's the one I would use. We're going to go into text form though, kids, so we can do it there. So we're going to do variable, variable, and I'm just going to start working my way down. I know the first one I'm going to need to get here is the quote. So I know I'm going to have a quote variable. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, for right now, it's going to be equal to nothing, kids. We're going to leave that blank. So this is just like initializing it to zero. We're just leaving it blank right now. Next part here, we need another variable, and we're just going to work our way down. The next thing here, we have font family, and I'm just going to name it just like that. You can see it's in camel case. So we have font family. Same thing, we're going to set that equal to zero or initialize it to zero. Don't forget your semicolon. The next one over is going to be a color kids. And we're going to set our color initially because we can't have it blank. So we can set it to whatever color we want. I'm filling a light blue color kids. We'll try that. And then we're going to do our variable, the last one, font size here. And you can see it's a font size. And that, we're just going to set it equal to, let's pick a random number. How about my age, kids? 24. So that right there is just my variables to get this started. Well, now that we created a bunch of variables, what are we going to do, kids? Well, let's start working from the top down again from our variables, right? First thing we're going to do, let's comment this out. This is going to be when text is typed in the box. And that's what that one's going to be. And I think we're going to need an event because when we type something in there, so I'm going to drag my event over there and we need an ID for my event. That is going to be my quote input. So we're just getting the ID here, quote input. So we have our quote input. And this time, kids, let me switch over to blocks here. We have some different versions here we can do. When we click on something, something happens. When something changes, something happens. But we have this neat little one down here called input. So anytime anything is inputted into there, it's going to create it. So I'm just going to click input on that one. In the future, I'm just going to type that in. I just wanted you kids to know that I'm not pulling that out of nowhere. Well, what do we do next? Well, well we got to use our variable, right, kids? So our quote is going to be equal to what? Well. We want to get the text, right? We want to get the text from what's in there. So our quote is going to be get text. And where are we getting the text from? Well, kids, it was the quote input. So we're going to quote input. Same as above there. Whoop, don't forget your semicolon, kids. Now. Oh, we're getting an error there, kids. Why are we getting an error? Well, I just forgot my parentheses around there, so I should take that away. Now, I know I'm going to need some update screen here, so I'm just going to put a placeholder down, kids. This is going to be update screen. Eventually, I want to go through and update everything, but I haven't written it yet, kids. I just want to know it's there. So that's where my little quote part's coming from. And eventually we're going to do an update screen just like everything else. But we're going to keep it commented for right now. Well, that's just one, kids. We're pretty much going to do the same thing for our, the rest of our variables. So this is when a color is selected from the dropdown. Maybe we should try a spelling that right. So we're going to do the same thing as we did on there, right? We're going to do on event. And this time we want what? We want the color input, right, kids? So the ID is going to be a color input. Oh, 
like that. Now on this one, we go back to our blocks. The other one was input kids. We also have, if you remember, change. So anytime that changes, it's going to update. So for this one, I'm gonna do change. First one, anytime anything is inputted. Well, the second time, anything is changed. And what's changed? Well, that's when we get the color there. We're doing the same thing. We're getting the text, even though there's not text there, kids, it's still the input. And we're getting color input right there. Semicolon after that. And then again, I think we're gonna need to update our screen eventually. So I'm just gonna put a little empty one right there again, comment it out so it isn't screwing me up. Well, kids, we did the color input. I'm assuming we're gonna have to do the font family input. So again, I'm just gonna drag a block in over here. And this one is not going to be color ID, it's going to be font, font family input. Say that 10 times quick, kids. Font family input. This one is also going to be a change as we go there. And this one, we are going to get the font family is going to get text from what? Well the font family input. After that, we're eventually going to update screen. Well, looks like we have a little spelling error here, kids. It should be a font family like that. That's looking a little better. We forgot to comment this out. This is when a font is selected from the drop down. And kids, well, that's two of them. We still got to get the font size. So when the slider is moved, the font size will change. So that's what we're getting from that one. Still kids, gonna be the same way. We're gonna drag another on event in. Which event? Well, this is the font size input. So we're going to go to font size input. This one, again, what's it gonna be? Well, just like this one, we're actually inputting it. So we are going to go to input here. I could be wrong, kids. This could be a change. We'll find out here in a minute, though. For this one, well, we have one variable left, font size. And what's that going to do? That's going to get the number of font size input right there. So that one is just getting whatever number the font size input is. And then kids, oh, we are going to update our screen like that. Kids, let's jump back to our cheat sheet here for a second. And you'll notice under our update screen, we are setting text and setting proper. You're gonna notice in our update screen, it gives us a big hint here. We are always setting the text, but we are also setting the properties of something. So this one's setting the property of the count label to whatever the text color is, and then that one is a green. So I think on this one, kids, I'm gonna to have to use the set text and set property within my function. And remember our if else if statement, where we're gonna come back in a bit and we're gonna copy and paste this all to put it in, but we're not there yet. Let's just worry about the rough outline of setting our text first, kids. So here we are back on code.org. What we want to do is first things we need to do is make a function here. And this function is going to be called kids update a screen. Our friend. First thing I really need to do here is we need to set the text of our quote maker, right kids? We really need to do that. So if we come down here, the first one I think I'm gonna need is a set text. And if you look over to our controls, set text here as the ID and the text we wanna put. We wanna go to quote input here, right? So we're gonna do a parenthesis. 
and we want to put a quote input right there. We're going to do a comma and we want it just to point to our variable quote. That's it. So our function here, quote input right here is just going to print whatever the variable quote is here. And what's the variable quote? Well, quotes getting whatever the user input is right here. So that's just how those three go along. Well, once we get it, now we have to set the font, the color, and the size to some things, right? Because the user is going to be changing it. That's my set property button, kids, right here. And if you look, we set the property with the ID, the property, and the value. So on this one, I'm just going to drag my set property in there. And the first one we need to do is our color output. So we want the color output. And what do we want? Well, we just want the background color, right, kids? We want the background color. And what do we want it set to? We want to set it to our color. That's what we want to do. We go over to our blocks here, kids. You'll notice when I come down here, we have a bunch of different things we can set it to. Background color is just one of them. So that's where that number is coming from. Same with the color output. That is just one of our outputs. So if you're ever worried or confused which one, switch over to block. It'll give you a little help out. Well, kids, well, that's just one thing to do. We got to do it again. So we're going to go to our set property again. And this time, we don't want to set the color output, we want to set the quote output. So now it's going to be quote output. And we're setting what quote output? Well, we're setting the text, right, kids? So in that one, let's go back to show blocks so we can go back down here for this one. And if you look, one of these is going to be the font family. So there's some preloaded font families in there. And what font family? Well, over here, we don't want all of these fonts. We want it to be our variable, right? Because whatever it selects, that's what we want. And remember, kids, variables don't get quotes. So this should be a font family, just like that. And that one should set our font size over there now. Now, I can't test any of this yet because I haven't updated anything. I'm just taking some guesses here, kids. We have our font family. We have our color. Really, there's only one more thing left to do, right? Our font size. So let's do one more before we test. We're going to do one more set property. Let's go over to blocks. And this one, kids, is the same thing. It's going to be our quote output because that's where we're going to. And this one, instead of font family, it's going to be font size. And the font size is going to be what, kids? Well, the same variable as we had before, font size. So I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to go font size. That is my variable right there. So all three of these are just calling to update these variables you created. That's all it is, kids. So we created a variable. We figured out how we got that input from the user. And then we updated that input on the screen right here, kids. That's it. So this should work. Let's take our updated screen off comments and let's try it. So let's hit run. And let's do a quote. APCSP is amazing. Spelled right. And if we go here, we can go to Georgia color and back. Doesn't look like something's happening though, kids. Seems like my text isn't coming up. I wonder why. Well, all of these are quote outputs, but for some reason I put quote input in here, kids. I think this actually should be quote output. Well, let's reset this. Run. AP CSP is amazing. So that was it, kids. I just had the wrong input there. So that's a nice one. We can change it to a different font. Looks like that's actually working. Different color. Looks like that's working. Different sizes, that all looks like that's working pretty good, kids. Everything looks like it's working well, but, 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 we still got one more thing to do. Let's jump back 
to our worksheet real quick. And we have this to deal with. This is going to be our if else if statement. And we can really just copy and paste this whole thing in kids, because this is what we're going to be using. And if we have some different colors, we're going to give some different feedbacks on it. So let's jump back to our program. And I'm going to comment this out real quick, kids, because I just want to make sure below is if else if statement. And this is just going to tell me where this part is at, especially if I screw this up, kids. Let's try spelling that right. So anything below this is going to be my copy and paste. This is just my little code to myself, all right? So let's go control V here. And we copied it in. Woohoo! So on this one, now we just got to start selecting some stuff. We pretty much just have to take out whatever's in these little parts right here and put something in. So let's pick a color. Let's say if color is light blue. If a color is a light blue and colors kids on this one, I believe they are all lowercase no matter what. Let's do a font family. Let's just do times kids. I want to get something I can spell right. We're going to set the feedback is bra. Nice colors like that. And kids, we want this printed off exactly, right? So this is going to go in quotes because we want this to say exactly what we want it to say. So if the color equals blue, light blue, and the font family equals times new Roman, we're going to set the feedback output, which is this little part here. And what are we going to set it to? We're going to set it to say, brah, good job. So just keep that in mind. These are both within quotes too, kids, both within quotes. So let's do our else statement now. I'm going to delete some things here. Let's actually do one at a time, kids. Too many gets us all messed up. So this one now wants to do a different color and a different font size. So else if, let's say, color equals lavender and font family. Let's see another font family, kids. Comic. There was a comic sans. I didn't realize that. Comic. We're going to say, oops. We're going to say, really? Comic Sans? Like that. And then we're going to do once any other feedback. We're just going to say, oops. Any other feedback? We're going to say, was it nice design, kids? Nice design. All right, looks like we have one error here. It says a lavender hasn't been declared yet. Well, kids, why is that? Well, these need to be in quotes. So our quotes, our times, everything in here. Oops. This should be a light blue. And then my font family will be times. Same thing with comic here. And don't forget about our color lavender. So we had some quotes to go around here. So don't forget them, kids. Woo! It's looking pretty good, I think. Let's reset it. There's my missing little part there. I was getting worried about that thing, kids. Well, that closes our method. Well, that should be pretty good. All right, let's try some of this out kids let's try light blue let's do a test all well, this is a test and we want the font family to be times and we want the color to be a light blue and the font size oops so kids we have a little issue here and 
let's take a look and see what this little issue is. And I think it is, I have font family declared twice here. I think I need it to be font size. I can't say the same thing twice, right? So if the font size now equals, let's just say 24, now we should get something else. Really? 24 as a size. We'll just make it sound a little better there, kids. So let's reset it, run it. Let's try this again. Well, this is a test, not a text. Font family should be times. Color should be light blue. Kids, please make sure you check your spelling. Lavender is with an E, so just be careful. So let's reset run this. This is a text. We're gonna go to uh, times. And then our color is going to be light blue. We get a nice design down here. Let's try it with a lavender. And then see, you can see we're just getting our design there. So that looks like that's working. The only thing that doesn't look like it's working is our light blue color here. Let's just try another color. Let's try light green. So let's see now if our light green color. So we have times and light green. Does not look like this one is working. Oh, you know why kids? Because we needed it uppercase. Let's try that one more time. So on this one, we go back to times, color light green, bra nice color. So there we go. Make sure kids, your spelling is exactly like that one. So that one threw me off for a bit. In kids, that looks like everything works now, right? We have lavender and font size spelled right this time. So we can just do any font, lavender, and then it'll only do in 24. Otherwise, nice design, times and light green. Now get bra, nice colors. So again, kids, make sure you are spelling everything right there. And kids, that looks like that is the complete project for lesson 11, number three. As always, kids, if you have any questions, please come see me. Otherwise, and I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.